a healthy person has a thousand wishes. An unhealthy person only has one. We only get one body. We only get our health to the degree that we can put into it. If you get really good treatment, I promise it's worth whatever you pay in it to prevent further injuries, to get you feeling better faster, to get you healed deeper than you would have otherwise. It is worth whatever time and money that you put into it. It is a blessing for us to feel good. And if we have these little warning signs our bodies are telling us are causing problems, potentially could cause problems that we should take the steps to improve. A healthy person has a thousand wishes. An unhealthy person only has one. We only get one body. We only get our health to the degree that we can put into it. If you get really good treatment, I promise it's worth whatever you pay in it to prevent further injuries, to get you feeling better faster, to get you healed deeper than you would have otherwise. It is worth whatever time and money that you put into it. It is a blessing for us to feel good. And if we have these little warning signs our bodies are telling us are causing problems, potentially could cause problems that we should take the steps to improve. Hey everyone, Derek Hines here. Welcome to the podcast where I'll share with you the patterns, insights, research, and technologies that we use in my own pain and performance practice to help people improve their health, speed their healing, and increase their longevity. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoy it. Good day, my friends. Welcome to a little evening edition of Tea with Dr. D. Um, I wanted to change this up and see if I could chat with y'all this afternoon and kind of catch a little little evening, a little bit of time with you. So if you have any questions, any thoughts, uh, anything that we can go through and help you out in terms of health, healing, anything uh, that we can do. That's what we do here on Tea with Dr. D. So uh, I hope uh, I hope y'all are doing well today. My tea, I'm actually drinking. Um, this is kind of one of my go-tos in the afternoon. So coffee fruit tea is a uh, kind of extract where it's like the bean that the coffee comes in and they take that And it's got good like antioxidant properties and quite good health properties and low in caffeine. So great for like an afternoon or evening. Um, So I always mix up my afternoon tea with that. So um, that's uh, that's where we're going. And I thought I'd kick this off with a conversation that I just had with one of my patients. Uh, she, She was telling me that her husband started doing like infrared and PEMF. So if you're not familiar with that pulse electromagnetic field therapy, Uh, is something that communicates with your cells. You lay on this mat that creates a field around your body that improves cell communication, that uh, improves blood flow throughout your body. And uh, that helps a lot with reducing our nervous system stress. So a lot of us live in kind of this fight or flight all the time. And we're always kind of in this like stress state. And when we get on PEMF and we get on one of these um, uh, pulse electromagnetic magnetic field mats, it reduces the uh, stress that our cells are having to, to function under. So um, what she was saying was when her husband started doing this, uh, his anxiety and his stress and his kind of irritability and really like overall mental well-being has improved dramatically. And so she was like, look, he's going to keep doing it whether he likes it or not. Um, But it does kind of show you how much today we're all in this kind of sympathetic overdrive. We're all in this fight or flight all the time. And if we can have those things in our in our day, in our week that help us reduce stress, that help to calm our nervous system, it really does help a lot with mental health. But it also helps a lot with healing because our, our brain and our body don't know how to separate Um, physical stress from mental stress. Those two affect our body very much the same way. So um, whether we're we're worried about a conversation or we think we're stressed out about food or we think we're stressed out about running from a lion, our brain and our body treats all of those things the same. So, you know, that's something that we're always trying to improve is can we improve how our body handles stress? And um, it, can we have some things in our daily life, in our weekly life that help lower that 
uh, anxiety level from a chemical standpoint inside the body. And that can be really, really powerful, whether that is doing something like sauna, doing cryotherapy, or in this case, doing like a PEMF and infrared uh, combination session. So um, I thought it was a really cool story. She said it's, it's just dramatically changed uh, his life, his stress, his healing is greatly improved. So uh, if you have any questions, welcome to Tea with Dr. D. Please let me know if any questions jump out. And uh, if you have anything on thoughts uh, on, on healing, on pain, uh, we'll dive into it. I know we got a couple of questions that we're going to jump into uh, that uh, a few of you sent. Um, you can text us if you have any questions um, and we'll dive into them on here. So here's what we got. Um, Amy, I, and I remember reading this, I was like, I definitely want to dive into this because um, I've talked a lot about shoulder health. So uh, when we're looking at something like this, a slap tear is a labral tear at the top of your shoulder. Um, and it's one of those areas that I think a lot of people will talk about needing surgery. So, you know, I've heard that, that I can heal something like that without pain, without surgery. Um, what would you recommend? What com compounds? And we've gotten a lot of questions. This is why I wanted to dive into this um, in terms of BPC 157. So let's explain this a little bit. So when we're looking at the shoulder, your labrum is what kind of creates the capsule around your shoulder there. And so when we look at something like that, um, it really is what keeps our shoulder in the socket, so to speak. So uh, it's very important. If we don't have a good intact labrum, your shoulder will start to feel very loose in there and start to kind of slide around and almost, you know, slide out of socket at times. And so when we look at this, we're trying to strengthen that labral attachment around the shoulder. Um, so that's what the labrum is and does. Let's talk a little bit about BPC-157. So BPC-157 is a peptide that is often originally found in stomach acids. It's found in your stomach. And what it's used for in general is to repair stomach lining. When we have it in enough uh, capacity, it goes outside of the stomach, goes into the cells. And what we see on research is that it attaches um, to the receptors that are responsible for uh, growth hormone and growth factors. So that's how we think it helps to aid in tissue regeneration. Um, it, we're still digging into that, but what we do know through animal models is that BPC-157 does a really good job of helping the body repair tissue, helping the body to regrow healthy tissue and increase growth factors in those tissues. Um, that is really important because when we're trying to regrow something like a slap, a labrum, that's not a very vascular tissue. Your labrum is a, a very high collagen tissue. Um, and, and when we're trying to regrow that, it's a, it's a difficult thing to do. We need to make sure that we're getting blood flow to it. We need to make sure we're getting regenerative compounds to it. So I have seen many slap tears repair completely without doing surgery. Um, there's a, a limit to that, of course, and like how much could your body potentially repair? Uh, what we see that works really well is if you're using a compound like BPC-157, if we're directing that compound, so um, we would do something like needle into the, the labral area where the damage is at um, so that we're activating a healing process so your body knows where to send the peptides to actually create the regenerative process. Now that takes some energy. So a lot of times we would wanna combine that. Uh, we do high intensity laser therapy. This is a multimodal approach to healing the labrum. Um, that high intensity laser gives those cells lots and lots of energy so that they can actually rebuild some healthy tissue. Uh, a couple of caveats, BPC-157 has gone nuts. It's everywhere. And even you hearing me say this now, you'll probably start getting ads <laughs> for it. Um, be very careful where you get peptides. Um, you really want to make sure that you're getting peptides from a very reputable place. Uh, we have a company that we work with uh, that uh, makes a really good peptide. Um, it's very well studied. I haven't seen any negative reactions from it. I've had a few patients who bought 
peptides online that were kind of for experimental purposes and had bad reactions to them, that's almost always due to a tainted compound, a tainted peptide. So just be careful where you're finding those things. Ideally, you would work with a practitioner who's helping you get those. Um, I know it looks enticing to see a peptide online for like half the price of what your doctor might be telling you. There's a reason that it's that cheap and I've seen negative reactions to some of those. So um, that's my my little um, kind of spill on that. This could be a great uh, a great treatment to start the healing process. And then what we need to do is we need to gently start to strengthen the labral attachments. And that's basically doing stability work in your shoulder. Um, so a lot of times we'll start doing that very easily where we're just starting to do like planks and things like that, where you're loading the shoulder to create more stability in the shoulder joint. Um, I'll say this here. I, I don't know where, Amy, where you're, where you're, you're asking this from. Find somebody really good to work with. Find a great therapist. Find a great doctor um, who can help you go through the initial stages of this. I'm not saying there's not a point on the end where you can do a lot of this on your own, but that's not something, especially a slap, if you're going to really heal it, that's not something you want to go at uh, on your own. You really want to make sure that you're working with somebody very good who's giving you mechanics, who's trying to address the reason you had the injury in the first place, and somebody who's really going to be helping the healing process improve and go in the right direction and tell you when things are kind of getting off. That's really tough to do um, because if you're healing a slap tear, you're going to have times where it still is feeling bad because you're stressing the tissue. You need to know that, you, nope, I'm on the right path. That tear is healing. I'm taking the right things. I'm getting the right treatment. I'm getting all of the, the correct things into my body so that I can repair that. Um, when we're doing stuff like this, increase, like all the small things matter when you're trying to heal tissue like this. Increase protein intake. Make sure you're eating really clean. Um, make sure you're staying hydrated so that blood flow is getting in and out of these deeper tissues. All those things do really well um, to help kind of increase your ability to heal these things. So uh, yes and yes, but I would work with somebody who is is local, who has worked with slap tears before um, and really make sure you're kind of getting a multimodal approach. I never recommend somebody to just take a peptide so that they can heal. The same thing I don't find very often that just taking, you know, a single medication to heal pain or a physical problem ever works. You need to do like a multifactorial treatment approach to get this stuff better. So um, hopefully that helps. Uh, you can heal it, but I, I would bring in more than just try and take the peptide and do the exercises on your own. You're going to need more to really heal a complex slap tear. So. Hope that helps, Amy. Let me know if you have any questions about that. Hope y'all are doing well out there. Uh, give me a, drop me a, a, a little line. Say hi if you're if you're joining us. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, I appreciate y'all jumping on with me this evening on uh, tea with Dr. D. Getting my little coffee fruit tea in. This goes. I mean, this this goes without saying. I'm gonna spare y'all my soapbox a little bit. Um, I get this question a lot, specifically from online communities where like somebody is like, I, I can I can YouTube these things. Um, I can see the exercise. Do I need to do I need to go and pay for treatment? And um, look, when we hear these things, I think one, if you feel like you're getting care that you can do on your own, then find other care, you know, fi find somebody else to work with. Um, that's never what we want somebody to feel like. The other thing is there's so much conflicting information. I just had this conversation with one of my patients today. He's like, I'm looking up exercises to do for elbow, elbow pain. And one guy says, do these, they're great. And another guy says, no, don't do those, they're terrible. One guy says, all you have to do is load it. Another guy says, all you have to do is stretch it. And he's like, look, I, I, it's, I'm getting pulled in all these directions. I don't know which ones to actually do. And one of the things that I was telling him is like, all those answers are yes. They could be good depending on where you're at in the healing cycle. So that's a big part of it is like you could be doing the right thing at the wrong time. And if that's the case, you're going to still have a negative outcome. You could do the right stretch or the right exercise at the wrong time, and it's still going to be painful or not get you to where you want to go. Um, so I think, uh, yes, 
you know, there should be some things that you are doing on your own to get better. Um, but you really want to make sure that you're, you know, where you're at in the healing process, you know, what you need to do in that healing process to get to the next level. And you know, like what your job is and what the practitioner's job is. I think all those things should be the case anytime you're getting care, whether that's from uh, a physical therapist, an osteopath, a physician, a chiropractor, any of those things. Um, that should be the case uh, in any treatment where you're collaborating on these things. So um, I think it's going to be much different if you go and get great care and they're working on and activating and doing things um, to turn on muscles and turn off muscles and working on the nerves, making sure the joints are moving well, um, making sure that the, the muscles attached to those joints are functioning well, that the fascia on those muscles is moving how it's supposed to, and the nerves communicating to and from all that to your brain is functioning well. Um, that's the stuff that really gets us over the hump and is much more than kind of just doing exercises. So um, I think uh, that is my answer to this. Get great care so that you feel like it's worth it. If you get really good treatment, I promise it's worth whatever you pay in it to prevent further injuries, to get you feeling better faster, to get you, you healed deeper than you would have otherwise. It is worth whatever time and money that you put into it. We only get one body. We only get our health um, to the degree that we can put into it. So um, it's really important. You know, they have the little saying, it's like, you know, a, a healthy person has a thousand wishes. An unhealthy person only has one. And I think that is really valuable to, to kind of remind ourselves that, you know, it is a blessing for us to feel good. And if we have these little warning signs, our bodies are telling us, uh, are causing problems or potentially could cause problems that we should take the steps to improve. We should take the steps to get healthy because you can only put up with it so long. So I'll spare you all the rest of my soapbox on that. Obviously I can talk about that all day, but, um, it, yes, you do need to find good care. And if you feel like I can just go and do the exercise, I'm being shown exercises, sat in a corner and like going through the motions and I get checked on once every 20 minutes while I'm at, whether it's physical therapy or, or any other type of treatment, um, go somewhere else is my, my answer to that. So, um, hope that helps, Frank. I hope that helps. Uh, what else we got? If y'all have any questions, let me know, uh, drop us a comment. Um, <laughs> I love this. Uh, so we're, we're staying on the regenerative therapy bandwagon. Um, RZSLP asks, uh, what's up, man? I have a question. Thanks. Uh, I tore all four ligaments in my knee plus meniscus tear. Um, is it possible to come back after ligament? Okay. I was about to say, yep. You're not going to regenerate those. Um, after ligament reconstruction, I uh, work outside in construction. Yeah. So obviously if it, depending on this, if you've got, and this goes for anybody who's listening to this, if you've got ligament tears um, and it's a full thickness, thickness tear, the ligaments completely torn. We need to go in and have a procedure done for that most of the time. If we still have some components that are attached there, um, we can regenerate some, some portion of a healthy ligament. So if we're coming in after a surgery, uh, we have meniscus uh, injury and we're repairing the ligaments, that would be all four would be a, a really bad knee injury um, where we have the, the ACL, the PCL, and then the collateral ligaments, uh, MCL and LCL, if all four of those were torn, um, you did a really good job on this. But um, if you get that stuff repaired, and, and, and let's go through that, a lot of what we want to do is make sure that we're guiding the healing process really well. So in those situations, you need to really kind of do as much as you possibly can to heal this well. Um, I, I talk about it all the time. I'm sure y'all get tired of hearing it. Doing the small things works. So in these situations, you need to pay a lot of attention to uh, nutrition, to sleep, to movement, to diet, to supplementation, um, to stress. All of those things matter if your body has to undertake this massive healing approach. Um, so when we're talking about regenerating healthy tissue, we still go through the same complex if we're coming off of a surgery as we do uh, if we're trying to, to avoid a surgery. So if, if we're coming off of a surgery, I find a lot of times that, yes, bringing in 
um, like a collagen peptide works. Bringing in a peptide like BPC-157 really helps speed the healing process and the regeneration of those healthy attachments of the repaired ligament. So we put all of that stuff in. Things for knees that I think get missed uh, are we need to make sure we're regaining a crazy amount of stability in the knee to strengthen the knee to the degree that it was stronger and more stable than before the injury. Uh, you can do a lot. Y'all have probably seen or heard me talk about the footboard. A, a footboard is a little wobble board your foot stands on. This makes your knee kind of shake and you, you really have to work hard to stabilize yourself. All of our knee patients get on that at some point in their recovery to start to regain that, that stability in their knee. Um, once you're really moving and you're starting to probably six to eight weeks out of surgery, we want to make sure we're increasing walking. We want to make sure we're increasing um, extension. So you'll do a, a terminal knee extension. So you're standing and just really driving your knee all the way straight and just creating like a, like a, there's a rod through your leg and you're just tightening everything as much as you can to hold that knee straight. Uh, if we see anything after ligament surgeries, it's usually something called an extensor lag where you can't straighten your knee all the way and that creates a problem um, down the road that, that creates a lack of knee stability and that can really kind of cause some issues. If you're gonna be doing very high level work, then you need to make sure that you're doing high level training to get to that work. So we need to make sure we're doing balance training and you're doing full range of motion. Again, this is at the right time in the healing process, but full range of motion, um, knee strengthening. So we're strengthening at the very bottom of the knee range of motion all the way bent. And we're also strengthening all the way at that last 20 degrees of straightening um, and everything in between. We need to make sure that your program is going to allow you to squat and twist. So train for those things. Um, we get a lot of people on these balance boards as well. So stability becomes your major job. Get on a footboard, increase your foot strength and stability. Get on a balance board where the little roller is kind of trying to roll out. Y'all probably seen me talk about or do that on social media at some point. Um, in those situations, we're working the lateral stability of the knee and you're having to use your hip all the muscles in your knee, all the muscles in your foot to create that. Uh, those are really good things that you can do on that. Um, another thing that I'll throw in there that's just like a little tip, if you haven't tried blood flow modification therapy, uh, that would be on my list for something like this. Uh, that uh, Katsu, if you Google Katsu, um, that will be something that you can use. Uh, it creates a little tiny blood flow modification. You'd put it on your hip. It slightly slows the blood flow to all the muscles in your legs. So you get a 300% increase in growth hormone for doing very light work. So all those little balance exercises, we would do it with a blood flow modification band on you. And uh, you can go listen to my podcast with Stephen Munyatonis uh, about katsu therapy, amazing therapy, especially if you're coming off of a major injury like this. It's a really, really good thing that I would add in there. Uh, and and just keep going. You're probably going to be looking at 12 to 18 months of good strength and stability training to get to where you feel like your knee is healthy again, but it will get there. Make sure you're working with a great uh, doctor, a great team, a great physical therapist, and, and you'll really, you know, in this in a better place and, and really be able to use it. But uh, hopefully that helps. I would do all this, all the things that you can um, to increase the health of the tissue. Uh, and that is taking all the right things, keeping inflammation down, um, and then really start to kind of increase the stability that, that you can in the knee, in the hip, in the foot and ankle, uh, and, uh, you'll, you'll do really well with it. So, um, I hope, uh, I hope that helps, uh, and that you have a great process, um, to get that better. I'm sorry to hear that, man. I know that's a, a big injury and a big surgery. So um, I think uh, when we're looking at a lot of these things, one of the things I want y'all to kind of understand is like that, that almost all injuries can get better to some degree if we're doing the right stuff. And that's a big part of what we try and explain to patients is, you know, if you haven't gotten better from an injury or from a pain problem in the past, most of that is because either 
you haven't gotten the right treatment or you haven't gotten the right diagnosis. You haven't, you're not treating the right tissue. Uh, and every time I have a patient who's like, I got this injected and it didn't work. Most of the time, that's not your, your pain generating tissue. So we really want to work to find that. And then we can really take off with treatment. And so um, it, I'm not saying that there's one specific therapy. I don't believe in a magic bullet. I think when we're treating pain and we're treating complex issues, everything is wrapped into that. You have, you have kind of the, the nerve function, blood flow, the vascular function, the muscle function, the joints, uh, you have the fascial coverings around that. You have the, the functional activity and then the beliefs about what we can do with that. All of those things interrelate to get to how much better can we get. So um, we need to address all of those factors whenever we are looking at getting better and getting good recovery and getting over some sort of a pain problem, uh, you can get to the point where you're going to feel a lot better. Just keep going, keep searching, keep believing it can get better because I'm telling you, I've seen every crazy injury get better. I've seen nerve issues, brain issues, all of these things can improve if you just keep going and keep trying to get a little bit healthier in one area or another each day, just try and get a little bit better. Um, and when you do that, those things start to stack and they start compounding and they really feed into a lot of areas of, of your health and your recovery. So um, you can get better. I promise it can get good care, keep looking, keep trying things and, and keep getting a little bit healthier every day and, and you can heal some pretty deep complex issues. So uh, I hope that helps. Some of you out there, uh, if you have questions, please shoot me a text. Uh, I am the one that answers that, 801-691-7582. And uh, we'll, we'll answer whatever questions you have. We may throw it on next month's tea. Uh, and if you have anything else that you need, don't hesitate to reach out to me or my team. Uh, they are the best at what they do. So uh, I hope you all have a great evening. Thanks for joining. Thanks for uh, the questions. Thanks for the feedback, everybody. Have a good night.